This episode picks up immediately after the previous one. So following the completion of the aircon trunking, the plaster seal team returned the very next day to commence sealing and partition works. Let's take a look at all the works performed, starting in the kitchen. Remember, in an earlier video we mentioned that after hacking away the service yard wall, we will be left with an uneven surface from the kitchen tiles in transition to the solid wall of the service yard. The solution would be then to build a partition wall to flush it evenly. A funny tip would be to clean the insides before the partition is put up. No one is going to do it for you. Otherwise, you will have to live with the fact that there are rubble and trash stuck inside for years to come. This may sound extreme but we don't want an instant where a stray cigarette gets boxed up. Yes, we are nice to allow our contractors to smoke in our house but they really throw the secret butts at all corners. Moving on to the living room, I'm sure most of you will have such shallow niches somewhere in your home in some shape or form. If HDB is watching this, we'll hope you would consider eliminating these weird unflushed walls. Surely there are better modern architectural solutions when it comes to beams and structures. Opposite to this side of the wall would be where our Samsung The Frame TV is mounted. Believe it or not, but this is one of the most complicated things in our house. Let's explain what's gonna happen here. We know we want to mount the frame TV on the wall and drop an in-wall cable inside. However, that is not possible with the HDB drywall as you may have seen in our hacking episode that it contains this Mau Mau fiberglass wool. Then comes the headache which we had to solve all by ourselves. We didn't know how partition walls work and what's inside it, but all we knew we needed was two holes, one for the cable to enter from the TV side and the other to emerge at the Samsung One Connect box side. This would be straightforward, no pun intended, if it simply dropped straight down to the Samsung One Connect box inside a TV console. However, since we have done away with our TV console, the cable had to cross diagonally inside the partition wall to emerge at the bay window's carpentry. And since our TV is not here yet, we wrecked our brains because it would not be easy for the TV installer to help belay the cable diagonally and Sam thought of this ingenious plan. Basically, we will use raffia string as a proxy and once the TV is delivered, we will tie the end of the cable to the raffia string and drag it across and out from the other hole. We even prepared recessed wall mount plates 
and a rubber hose for extra protection just in case. We briefed the plaster sale guys ourselves and they mentioned that there would be a piece of wood that would be required to support the weight of the TV but they will be able to saw a hole through it and help us with our request. We are excited and nervous about this. Hopefully it works and we can't wait to show it to you next time in a more detailed video as examples online are few and far between. A curved four ceiling flows from our living to dining room. Before you leave a comment saying that it will collect dust, we weighed the pros and cons and still went ahead as we felt that the design would bring character to our otherwise monotonous home and cove lighting would really soften the mood. You will also notice that we have an aircon plummet catered to the specifications provided by the aircon installer the day before and also our aircon trunking is now encased in an L box that flushes all the way to the master. If you haven't watched our previous video on aircon trunking, do check it out as we really go in depth. In the master, we have a simple L-shaped floor ceiling that hugs our walk-in wardrobe and one of our favourite spots in our home, an arc way that leads into our sleeping room. Yes, it is yet another overdone arc, but ours will be different and you will see why the next time when our glass door is ready. Our sleeping room has a similar L-shaped floor ceiling with a slight curved cornering, a hint of transition from the very curved dining room ceiling to the very right-angled walk-in wardrobe ceiling. You also notice that the floor ceiling will not be directly above our heads, like we mentioned previously, this is intentional from a safety standpoint due to recent news. On to some other reno updates. So we have started to correct some of the bad tiling works. Right now, the main bulk of issues are the skirtings. You can see on screen how badly done it is. There are also tiles that are badly scratched. The reason why we are doing this in piecemeal is because we do not want to reach a stage where it is too late to fix things and the only way is to live with it or delay our move in. 